There is no denying this conviction that life throws unprecedented challenges toward us. Although the disputes are enthusiastic, humankind can advance to the event if we keep our worries under check and be more modest about our ideas. Terrorists have mastery in mind control. They assassinate very few people but manage to scare billions and vibrate enormous political structures such as the European Union or the United States. Terrorism is a military technique that wishes to transform the political situation by circulating fear rather than forcing material harm. Fragile parties who cannot impose much material damage on their opponents almost always embrace this method. Every military action circulates apprehension. While in traditional warfare, worry is just a byproduct of temporal defeats and is usually proportionate to the power imposing the losses. In terrorism, the central focus is on fear, and there is an incredible disproportion between the actual power of the terrorists and the fear they manage to uplift.
After an act of terrorism, the opponent persists in having the same number of fighters, tanks, and vessels. The enemy's communication web, roadways, and railways are primarily untouched. His plants, docks, and bases are barely touched. Terrorists make numerous calculations. When the enraged adversary uses his immense strength against them, he will expand a much more fierce military and political hurricane than the terrorists could ever make. During every typhoon, many unpredictable things occur. Terrorism is an unappealing military system because it leaves all the significant decisions at the enemy's disposal. Since all the opportunities the opponent had before a terrorist attack are at his disposal after that, he is free to select among them. Provoking the enemy to move without destroying any of his weapons or choices is an act of distress, accepted only when there is no other alternative at his disposal. Whenever it is feasible to impose serious material injury, nobody gives that up to sheer terrorism.
The terrorists do not have many choices at their disposal. They are so feeble that they cannot carry on with a war. So they opt instead to create a dramatic phenomenon that will hopefully prompt the opponent and cause him to overreact. Terrorists orchestrate a horrifying the sensation of brutality that catches our imagination and turns it against us. By destroying a handful of people, the terrorists create substantial fear in the minds of innocent citizens. On the contrary, countries react to the theater of terror with a performance of a security, producing massive displays of power, such as the persecution of whole populations or the attack of foreign nations. Pentagon is a relatively flat and modest structure, whereas the World Trade Center was a towering phallic totem whose destruction made an enormous audiovisual impact. Nobody who witnessed the pictures of its destruction could ever forget them. Because we intuitively comprehend that terrorism is theater, we evaluate it by its emotional rather than material effect. Like terrorists, those fighting terrorism should feel more like film producers and less like army. Big shots. Above all, if we like to fight terrorism, we must admit that nothing the terrorists do can overpower us. We are the only ones who can overpower ourselves if we express overreaction in a misguided manner to the terrorist pushes.
Terrorists launch an outlandish task to transform the political balance of power via brutality. Despite holding no army to accomplish their purpose, terrorists show the state an unbelievable challenge to demonstrate that it can shield all its nationals from political roughness anywhere, at any time. When the government advances to the challenge, it usually succeeds in destroying the terrorists. Hundreds of terrorist organizations have ceased to exist over the last few years in various states. In 2002-4, Israel demonstrated that even the most lethal terror movements could succumb to brute power. Once in a bluesman, the political storm formed by counter-terrorist movements does help the terrorists, which is why the risk makes sense. A terrorist is like a gambler carrying an evil hand, who persuades his opponents to rethink their strategy. A regime can resist horrible disasters and even forget them, provided its lawfulness doesn't thrive on controlling them. On the contrary, a regime may crumple due to a petty issue if it seems damaging to its legality.
600 years back, the Black Death killed a substantial part of European populations, yet no monarch lost his throne as a consequence, and no ruler made much of an action to crush the plague. Nobody back then believed that controlling plagues was part of a ruler's job. The government has repeatedly emphasized that it will not accept political brutality within its borders. The nationals, for their part, have become used to zero political brutality. Hence the theater of terror causes visceral worries about misrule, making people sense that the social hierarchy is about to crumble. The governments must respond to the theater of terror with their theater of protection. The AP test. Reply to terrorism might be superior intellect and covert action against the financial grids that fund terrorism. At the same time, this is something other than something nationals can see on television. The nationals have witnessed the terrorist drama of the World Trade Center crumbling. The state deems forced to orchestrate an equally stunning counter-drama with even more blaze and steam. So, instead of acting calmly and efficiently, the state releases a powerful storm, which not infrequently accomplishes the terrorists' most treasured dreams. <laughs> 